Um, I will start off with a statement uh, on the Philippines. The Secretary General congratulates the government of the Philippines, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the Bangsa Moro Transition Commission, civil society groups, and local communities on the establishment of the Bangsa Moro Transition Authority today. This follows the confirmation on the 21st of January and the 6th of February plebiscite of the organic law of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. This is a landmark achievement on the road to lasting peace in the southern Philippines, as well as a historic occasion for all people from the Philippines. The United Nations will continue to support the Philippines in the implementation of the Bangsamoro organic law and to help, the, uh, to help build the capacity of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority to achieve peace, democratic governance, and respect for human rights. Um, the, this morning, the Secretary General delivered the keynote address at the UN Association of the U.S. Global Engagement Summit. He told some of the 1,500 participants that over the years, the U.S. has played a critical role in helping provide multilateral answers to global challenges and stressed that today we need the engagement of the U.S. more than ever. He also told the students that the UN needs them to tackle today's most pressing challenges, including cl climate change, and he called on all of them to sound the alarm and highlight solutions for this issue. In a tweet, he asked them to share their climate action ideas with him. Also yesterday afternoon, the Secretary General spoke at the annual hearing of the Interparliamentary Union and the United Nations. He said that as a former parliamentarian himself, he has felt the heavy responsibility of representing people and trying to advance their aspirations. The Secretary General said that today we live in a paradox where global challenges are more connected, but our response remains fragmented. The Secretary General said that, to, uh, he added, excuse me, that it is our duty it is our duty as parliamentarians and at the UN to reestablish trust. His remarks are online. And this evening, our Deputy Secretary General, Mina Mohamed, will head out to Barcelona in Spain to deliver the keynote address at the World Mobile Congress to participate in meetings with CEOs. The Deputy Secretary General will highlight the power of mobile technology as a tool for development action and achieve the sustainable development goals. Also, while advocating for the need to bridge the digital divide, ensure gender parity, and mitigate the social and environmental risks of new technologies. On Monday, she will uh, head to Madrid for meetings with senior government authorities. During that, time, in, during that time, Spain and the UN will announce in a joint communique, which reflects Spain's strong commitment to the implementation of the 2030 development agenda, specifically the UN Development System Reform and Funding Compact. And on the 27th of February, uh, the Deputy Secretary General will proceed to Seville to deliver the closing remarks at the high-level event on localizing sustainable development goals, which is co-hosted by Spain, Ecuador, Cape Verde, in collaboration with the local 2030 uh, initiative. Turning to Nigeria, the head of the UN Office for West Africa and the Sahel, Mohamed M. Chambas, appeal today for all eligible Nigerian citizens to turn out massively to exercise their constitutional rights to vote tomorrow. As you know, these elections were previously scheduled to take place last Sunday, Mr. Cham last Saturday, excuse me. Mr. Chambas encourages all Nigerians to continue to maintain a peaceful atmosphere by remaining calm and restrained through the result of the voting process and especially after the announcement of the final results. He is calling on all political parties, candidates to contribute to the integrity of the electoral process by addressing any complaints that may arise through established legal and constitutional channels. Turning to South Sudan, nearly 7 million people in that country could face acute food insecurity at the height of this year's May to July lean season. According to a report released today by the South Sudanese government and our colleagues at the UN uh, Food and Agricultural Organization, the UN Children's Fund, and the World Food Program, the integrated food security phase classification report shows that the number of acutely food insecure people has already increased by 13 percent since January of last year. Food insecurity continues to be driven by the effects of conflict insufficient food production, and associated population displacement. The agency said there's an urgent need for more funds to scale up humanitarian assistance to save the lives and protect livelihoods. And our, the special envoy for Syria, Ger Peterson, is in Brussels today, where he met with the, 
excuse me, where he met with the officials, Belgium officials, yesterday as well. The special envoy met this morning with the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Federica Mogherini. Meanwhile, an estimated 2,500 people, mostly women and children from Hajin and Baguz in Syria's Derizor governorate, arrived at Al Hol camp in Al Hasake governorate last night, bringing the total number of internally displaced people to the camp to over 43,000. Uh, the conditions at the camp were extremely dire, as the camp has surpassed by far its accommodation capacity. Thousands more may arrive in the camp in the coming hours and days. And on Yemen, um, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that on the February uh, 19th, three days ago, eight civilians were killed, another 10 were injured in Hudeida when an artillery shell landed on Al Azib Market in Al Matina area. The following day, there were unconfirmed reports indicating that one woman was killed and three children were injured when a house was hit at Al Tawai in Hajjah Governorate. And humanitarian coordinator Lise Grande said these attacks are unconscionable. Um, and as you know, on next Tuesday in Geneva, the UN and the governments of Sweden and Switzerland are convening a third high level pledging event uh, on the humanitarian crisis in Yemen to mobilize support for the humanitarian response and the Secretary General. We'll address that meeting. Um, and our colleagues at the FAO have today released a new report in which they present mounting evidence that, biodiverse, that the biodiversity that underpins our food systems is disappearing, putting the future of food, livelihoods, health, and environment under severe threat. Information from 91 reporting countries reveals that while food species and many species are vital to food and agriculture are rapidly disappearing. More information online. Um, and something that I know will make you happy, at 5.30 p.m. this afternoon, there will be a press conference in this uh, very room, uh, and it will be held by Jorge Arazea, the Minister of uh, the People's Power for Foreign Affairs of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. We'll keep you updated if there are any scheduling updates. And today we say thank you to Namibia and Serbia who have joined the honor roll totaling there, at least one person pays attention. That's good. Questions? Yes. Hi, Stefan. Thank you. I have a, a couple of questions. Um, the representative of Venezuela will be here, um, but uh, the foreign ministry have posted some information about um, the United Nations serving uh, to help to get some aid donated by the European Union. Um, the Vice President of Venezuela announced that mm -hmm. initiative. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about that? And also, um, what is um, the reaction of the Secretary General after reports, or the Office of the Secretary General, after reports of two uh, people killed on the border between Brazil and Venezuela after a, um, reportedly a Venezuelan army man opened fire uh, when they were trying to get a humanitarian aid? Sure. Uh, on the first one, um, we've seen the reports and we've been in touch with our colleagues in the country office and here in Ocha and we're trying to get some clarity as to exactly uh, what the situation is concerning this, uh, concerning that, that statement. Obviously, uh, any loss of life is is regrettable. Uh, I think, especially looking ahead for uh, tomorrow, the Secretary General strongly appeals uh, for violence to be avoided. As you know, he's been following the situation in Venezuela with increasing um, concern, uh, and we will obviously keep a very close eye on what happens tomorrow, and again, very much appeal uh, to ensure that there is no violence. Maggie. To follow up on that, Steph, did he convey that message to Secretary Pompeo during their meeting yesterday because there's a lot of concern that the U.S. military might become involved This is there. a message the Secretary General has been conveying uh, privately and publicly uh, all around. Yep. Following up with that topic, um, as we speak, uh, Elliot Abrams is also heading to the border of uh, Venezuela and Colombia with humanitarian aid. Mm -hmm. Is the UN, and particularly the Secretary General, concerned about the weaponization of humanitarian aid and how that can affect the work that the UN does in the future in other countries? Well, I, I think we have been talking about this for, for quite some time, and we are concerned about the politicization of humanitarian aid. Uh, you know, for our part, uh, aid should be used uh, really to, in a way that is impartial, 
that is free of, of political or military uh, or any military objectives. And there are humanitarian principles that we abide by, and that's and I can only speak for ourselves. Michelle. Thanks, Steph. Um, I saw the readout yesterday from Pompeo and Guterres, which was brief. Um, did this, did Secretary Pompeo ask the Secretary General for anything on Venezuela? I, I can't really go beyond uh, what we said in the readout. I think you could you could also ask uh, the Secretary of State's uh, office what he uh, what he raised. But I saw their readout, which in fact. Uh, Thank God, in fact, matched what we said about the meeting, which is always a good thing. Um, so I really have nothing to I have nothing to add. As I said, they discussed uh, Venezuela, the events in the region, and of course the the importance of the Stockholm Agreement and the the implementation of the the Hodeida redeployments. And did the Secretary General convey the message that you just told us about the politicization of aid? I think that, as I said, this is a message the Secretary General has been conveying both publicly and privately. Yes, Mario. Uh, just a follow-up. Since, no since okay. the Secretary General met with uh, Mr. Pompeo yesterday and he's meeting uh, the Foreign Minister of Venezuela today, is he passing along any messages between the two parties? Uh, to I'm, I'm not aware of any messages that are being passed on. Yep. Yes, thank you. Okay, following up on um, Venezuela, <clears throat> tomorrow is the deadline where uh, Venezuela's oppositions are prepared for a showdown against Nicolas Maduro armed forces. And uh, they're expecting hundreds of thousands of volunteers to come and help uh, President of National Assembly to bring in the, the aid into the country to save millions of lives. On the other side, Nicolas Maduro is closing the borders in the air with uh, militias and with the support of the military forces. The UN has been calling for a good office of dialogue from both parties. But we all know there is not just the two parties. Many countries are involved I, I, in this. I, we're in we're this aware crisis. of the situation, so I would love to hear a question. Yes, the question is, on the arising of this situation in Venezuela and in the responsibility to to protect and in, in the responsibility to prevent any uh, worse situation in the region. Is there any other uh, position from the UN on this situation in Venezuela? Well, listen, uh, the Secretary General and we have been talking about our concern about the situation for quite, quite some time. The Secretary General has repeatedly said that his good offices are available. Obviously, as in any uh, any situation uh, where there are two parties with differing views, both parties have to accept uh, the good offices. The Secretary General is continuing, and, and others are continuing contacts at various levels with various parties. I mean, it's, so Secretary General met with uh, Secretary of State Pompeo to discuss Venezuela and other issues. He's meeting with the Foreign Minister of Venezuela this afternoon. He's been in touch with other uh, ministers in the region uh, and, in, and, and in Europe. There is obviously a regional aspect to this crisis, as we've been uh, talking about for quite some time, with a number of Venezuelans uh, leaving, uh, leaving their, their country, which has an impact on the neighboring, uh, on the neighboring countries. So uh, this is something that we're fully aware of, and the Secretary General is doing uh, what he can. Masuji. Thank you, Stefan. On this uh, uh, situation in the occupied territories, uh, one of the uh, uh, Palestinian teenagers was killed today. Has the Secretary General got anything to say about it and about the incarceration of uh, Palestinian children who still lie in Israeli jail? Anything about that, sir? Thank you. On the issue of uh, mm -hmm. children, nothing to what we've already uh, said to you on that. Uh, on that on that issue uh, and on the re the report of death I had not seen that report we obviously regret any loss of life but I will look into it yes um, the government of North Korea has asked um, humanitarian organizations for help mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to know is the UN going to help the uh, North Korea and is there some actions that are taken by the United Nations to provide humanitarian aid and uh, is there some um, document that's being drafted to provide this aid? And lastly, uh, 
Does the UN consider uh, easing or lifting sanctions on the country? Well, the, the issue of sanctions on North Korea, uh, obviously, are in the hands on the DPRK or in the hands of the of the Security Council. Uh, Security Council sanctions uh, exempt, clearly exempt humanitarian activities. However, there have been a number of unintended consequences on humanitarian uh, actions, notably on issues relating to, to banking, which has made our work a little bit more difficult. Because I said uh, yesterday we were concerned about the deteriorating humanitarian situation, and especially the one on, uh, regarding food security. The government has told us that there is a gap in the food production uh, for next year, notably on the harvest of rice, wheat, and potato. Uh, we are currently consulting with the government uh, in the B DPRK to further understand the impact of the food security situation on the most vulnerable people in the country. Nabil. Thank you. Do you have any updates from uh, their resort uh, where, you know, civilians uh, have uh, fled the clashes or fighting area with ISIS? Some of them, I think, arrived to uh, Al Hol camp. Yes, no, I mean, the, the update that we get is by the, the arrivals of civilians in Al Hol camp, which is already at over capacity. Uh, there was a transit kind of a, um, uh, we've prepositioned uh, help on the road uh, from Al Hol, from, from Deir Zor. The, the, the journey is very arduous. Uh, we're very, very concerned about not only the safety of the civilians, but also uh, their health. And a lot of them are arriving in, uh, in the camp in very, very bad shape. And we've seen, we've seen the deaths of a number of them. Uh, yes, I will pass them on to you. But I think right now the camp is at 46,000, uh, which is already over capacity. But I'll get you more numbers. Yes, in the back. Hey, Stefan. Um, yesterday's parliamentary hearing remarks actually mentioned that he will convene a summit on the climate change on September. So oh, can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Because the, is there going to be, he going to uh, bring up some financing issues? The, the, the summit uh, that is this, uh, scheduled for 2019, which the Secretary General has repeatedly talked about, is about uh, getting the political ambition up, getting the political commitments up from governments, uh, which obviously includes financing on the issue of climate change. All right. Great. Uh, Michelle, did you have another question? I can go home? Thank you. Okay, that's excellent. You answered. Thank you all. Have a good uh, weekend.